CataractCoach.com. Understanding hand position in FACO. Using a split screen, we can see the hand position and the microscope view at the same time. So here on the left side of the screen, you see the hand position view. On the right side is the microscope view. And starting off with a paracentesis here. So you can see you have some limbal marks as well, the ink marks. That's probably marking the horizontal meridian, the 0 and 180 degree marks. And patient's been draped appropriately. There's a nasal speculum. Now let's watch the case here. Going inside, probably with some anesthetic agent here. And so this is often a combination of lidocaine, maybe phenylephrine, maybe epinephrine, something of this nature. Obviously preservative-free, usually diluted with bound salt solution. And now, oh, here comes the viscoelastic. It looks like a dispersive viscoelastic being injected through that paracentesis. And then look at the technique there. Two-handed, one hand holding the hub of the syringe, the other hand on the plunger. Beautiful fill of the anterior chamber. I like it. Now look at that. Using the cannula to fixate the eye. Here comes the main phaco incision using a, a steel care tome, creating a, an incision here temporally. Incision looks pretty good. Now, the, the microscope screen went a little dark because you got reflections off of the blade. That's a steel blade that reflects back, and it can cause the camera's auto settings to kind of dim the video down a little bit. That's why I did that, by the way. Now, going inside here with the caps rexus forceps. Now, I'm going to poke in the middle of the nucleus here, or the lens capsule, and create a capsular rexus. So, grabbing that tissue here. And again, look how the right hand is holding the forceps and doing the work, and the left hand just kind of helping to stabilize it. Again, very reasonable approach here, getting a nice looking rexus done. Good pivot technique here. Now, you may recognize the name Lloyd Williams because we had him on the Cataract Coach podcast. We had a beautiful podcast that we did for Cataract Coach with Lloyd Williams talking about all of his mission trips around the world, especially recently in multiple countries in Africa. So you got to check that podcast out. Cataract Coach podcast is every Sunday. It's an hour long, and the sole purpose is to make you a more successful ophthalmologist. And it's free, bro. Check it out. Anyway, here we go. BSS on a blunt candle. You're going to get some hydrodissection. Look at that nucleus rotation. Hey, if it does not spin, you will not win, but this one spins. I saw it spin. It looks pretty good. Now, let's see what we got here. Oh, a pre-chopper. With the eyes still full of viscoelastic, pre-chopper going inside. And let's see, go in the nucleus. And can you pre-chop that into halves or quadrants? There's the pre-chopper. In the pre-chopper works. So if this is your technique, use it. I don't mind. Use whatever works best in your hands. There's a nice looking rotation here of the nucleus. And maybe more chopping. This pre-chopper is usually, most of these are designed by Akahoshi in Japan. And it's an easy way of spinning that nucleus up right off the bat. And so now it looks like you've already got four quadrants. Now by the time you stick your phaco probe in the eye, yeah, you've already made your work. So we've had multiple pre-chopper videos on cataractcoach.com before. Check it out. Yes, you may have to leave YouTube for a minute just to find a better search engine like we have on cataractcoach.com. On our Cataract Coach website, you can find videos for everything. All 2,300 videos are absolutely categorized. You can just say, I want videos about insertion of IOL, done. Incisions, done. Here are all the videos. You will look at the, Use the search engine, pre-chopper. There are all the videos. You'll learn a lot. Anyway, back to our case here. So again, a fake probe in the right hand, and the left hand just kind of helping to stabilize it. Some surgeons like to have a second instrument in the eye, inside the eye when they're doing this, and so... They can use the hand for that. Here, he's using the left hand now to kind of stabilize the head and move the head around a little bit, get a little bit better positioning here. And then I maybe now is calling for a second instrument. Is you No, know, maybe not. Yeah, and in fact, maybe yes. There it is. Here's a second instrument. Let's see what we got here. Looks like some sort of, let's see the tip of it, a chopper maybe of some design or a hook. And so rotating this around. Now, I'm pretty sure you already have four quadrants here from the pre-chopper. Let's see if those can be removed. So, rotating it a little bit. Here, you want to use a high vacuum setting. Higher flow, higher vacuum. Don't need much phaco part. It's not a very dense cataract. So, bringing your tip into that nuclear piece and kind of bringing that piece up out of the capsular bag. And let's see the technique here. Getting that piece up. And we're showing you the video in real time. I'm not going to speed it up today. I want to show you everything in real time. 
just it takes a few minutes. We'll get through the whole thing, but I think we'll learn a lot by doing so. And again, here, using the FACO probe to get up another quadrant, taking your time here. You know, if you're doing surgery on my eye, I don't mind a couple extra minutes as long as you make it just perfect. And yes, I want a video of the surgery when you're done, by the way. So here, bringing up the other half of the nucleus, you can see it comes up pretty straightforward, pretty easily. Get that thing right in the FACO probe, emulsify it down. Again, this patient didn't have a very dense cataract, and that looks great. So the eye looks like a little soft. Maybe you get more infusion going on inside the eye there. There we go. Last little piece there. I get the rest with the IA probe. I think the IA probe is probably a more reasonable approach for those wispy pieces. There you go. And the surgeon agrees. So putting those instruments away, now getting the IA probe. You have a little bit of downtime as your technician switches that over for you. And so you switch over to the IA probe here, and then bring that back. Here we go. There's the IA probe. And you can see, oh, you know, that's the transformer eye handpiece, by the way. I can tell that. I've used that before. That's an eye handpiece that you can kind of break apart into a bimanual if you need to. So now going inside here as the coaxial setting and then aspirating out that lens cortex, just taking your time. Now, I like to get lens cortex out in more of a circumferential manner. I think it's just a lot more effective and efficient in doing that way. But whatever works in your hands, well, that's what you should do. So going inside here, clean this up, get all the cortex out. Capture bag is pretty good. By the way, look at this. Professional surgeon. Draping is good. Beautiful draping. No lashes or in the field. The eyelid margin has been sequestered. Some of you young docs give me such grief when I point out patients who've had poor draping during cataract surgery. But it actually is important. So now finishing up here, cortex is pretty much out. Just needs a little bit of caps or bag polishing if you want to do that next step. Caps or bag polishing, not entirely necessary. Here comes a cohesive viscoelastic. Again, two-hander technique to inject that. It goes right in the caps or bag. Beautifully done. And you can see there's a little bit of a some lens epithelial cells on the underserves the enter caps rim. Again, that can be polished off pretty easily using the IA probe or some sort of polisher device. And let's see. You look at that. There's the polisher. Look at the cleaner and right up. That's a neat looking polisher. So getting that polishing done of the lens capsule going around. Yep, very nicely done. Is this absolutely necessary? I don't know. It's debatable, right? I mean, think about it. Maybe, maybe not. If it's my eye, yeah, I spent an extra couple seconds. It's not that critical. But don't break my bag. That I know for dang sure. I'd rather you leave some lens up with the cells and, you know, don't break my caps or bag. That I'll tell you for sure. So now, look at that coming up, ready for our IOL. So let's see, probably the technician's loading up the, the IOL now here. There you can see it's a good-looking caps or X's, nicely centered. It's probably about 5.5-ish millimeters, somewhere in that range. Maybe 5.5 and in one direction, 5.0 in the other. We'll find out. Oh, here we go. A Mendez gauge, so kind of an axis marker going on the eye now. And maybe the surgeon wants to line up where the torque eye well is going to go. So probably going to be a torque lens. And so again, mark, those two marks there are probably the 180 and 0 marks. So marking, lining those up. And then the surgeon is going to mark here. Looks like about, what, 110 degrees? Maybe. Let's see. About 110 degrees. All right. So 110 degrees marked off on either side. That's where the torque eye well is going to be lined up. And, you know, there are many ways of marking torque eye well. If you go to the cataractcoach.com website, you'll find many described techniques and showing you everything from start to finish. Here now, surgeons implanting the eye well. Looks like a single-piece monofocal acrylic lens of toric nature. Now delivering that in the bag. Slow, slow, slow. Nice and easy. There it goes. Get that delivered. Excelente. And there we go. Let's get that thing opened up. So that's definitely a toric lens. You can see the marks there at the haptic optic junction. Surgeon going in here with some, looks like a BSS cannula. Getting that thing rotated, getting it appropriately placed. Get the haptics to open up. Let's get some viscoelastic out of the eye. Oh, a little bit of hydration ahead of time. Very reasonable too, because that way when you get the toric eye well in the position that you want it in, and you take the viscoelastic out of the eye, and you come out of the eye, you're not going to flatten out the AC and get the lens to rotate. You want to keep it in its correct position. So here going inside the eye, with the IA probe taking out the viscoelastic here, probably going to go behind it a little bit. I saw the lens shake a little bit, so maybe some of the viscoelastic from behind lens already came out. So cleaning up all that cortex there, 
I'm sorry, cutting up all of that lens um, viscoelastic there. And now getting the lens lined up here. That looks pretty good. Going behind it. Yeah, go behind it. I, I like to go behind it. For a torque lens especially, I think you want to go behind the lens, remove that viscoelastic. I want that torque IOL optic touching directly on the posterior capsule because this lens here is kind of tacky and it'll stick in place. But if you have a layer of viscoelastic there, it can help the lens rotate. And you don't want that. You want the lens to stay in the correct position. So here we go. Looks pretty good. Let's just get that final rotation done, get that lined up. It looks like it's pretty close to the mark that were made, the 110 degree marks. That looks great. And the incision's already been hydrated, so as you come out of the eye with the eye probe, the eye shouldn't deflate too much. And then just seal it up and call this a day. Page is going to be happy. So beautiful case here. Very nicely done. Now you say, well, I want more of these hand position videos. I like to learn from the hand. Do you know if you went to cataractcoach.com? Instead of YouTube, and just type in hand as the keyword, you'd see multiple of these videos. Please, don't complain so much. Just go to cataractcoach.com, the website. Look up the word hand. Search engine there. I pay extra every month for a great search engine on that website. I seriously do. And if you type in the word hand, it will show you all the hand position videos. And you'll learn so much, and you'll learn the little tricks. You'll learn how do you hold a cannula to prevent it from shooting off inside the eye. And again, all the secrets, they're yours for free. All you got to do is put in a little bit of effort and go to cataractcoach.com. Best teaching site in all of ophthalmology. Everything is right there for you to have for free.